Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey everybody, I hope you guys are doing good today. So once again, this Ebony K. Williams situation. I don't see this dying down anytime soon. She has definitely really pissed off a lot of people. We did the whole call-in show Friday. Lots of good points were made on both sides, but people are still talking about this. So if you guys don't know, I think it was about two days after she went viral with her comments on The Breakfast Club, Iyana Van Zant came out and she basically also spoke. And she said that she would date, you know, a bus driver, a postal worker, and, you know, all that stuff. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch what Iyana Van Zant had to say. Go ahead and check this out. To all of the bus drivers, the UPS drivers, the FedEx drivers, to the sanitation workers and the EMS technicians and the postal workers, to the truck drivers who bring the milk that my great-grandson drinks and the bread that I love, to the supermarkets, <laughs> to the plumbers and the electricians, and, and yes, to even some of the Uber drivers. I would date you. <laughs> I want you to be real clear. I would date you, and I thank you for being the heartbeat of this country. I really do. And yes, I'm a lawyer. And yes, I have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a law degree, and an Emmy. I've been on the New York Times bestsellers list seven times for several times for some of the 19 titles that I've authored. And to you, beloved blue collar, hard working men out there, I would date you in a hot Mississippi minute. If, <laughs> and here are my conditions, okay? If you're good to your mother, and if you are in good relationship with the God of your understanding, and if you take care of or have taken care of all of the children you've sired, and if you treat me well, if you treat me well, yeah, I would date you because I believe those are good ingredients. And if you have good ingredients, you can make a great meal. <laughs> together, grow together, build together, evolve together, create together with good ingredients. And those things that I mentioned, I believe all of those are good ingredients. All right, so you guys just heard from Ayanna Van Zant. So now today, the person that Charlemagne the God was calling for on The Breakfast Club during the interview with Ebony K. Williams, they were asking for Umar Johnson to speak on the situation. And Umar Johnson is definitely speaking and stating his opinion on the Ebony K. Williams drama. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys what Dr. Umar Johnson had to say. Go ahead and check this out. I saw that sister on The Breakfast Club this morning. What's her name? Erica K. Williams. What, what's the sister who was on there with Charlemagne and Envy today? Very well-spoken sister. What's her name? I seen her. What's the sister's name, brothers and sisters? Ebony. Ebony K. Williams. Well-spoken sister. She made some great points, but dear Ebony, that's not what you was talking, sweetheart. That's not what you was talking. You was on some talented 10th bullshit, and you tried to take it back to the community this morning, sister. See, we can't talk out both sides of our mouth. We can't talk out both sides of our mouth, sister. We can't talk out both sides of our mouth. I didn't disagree with much of what you said today, but that's not what you said the other day, sister. You was talking down to working class blacks. You are a bourgeoisie. You are a bourgeoisie feminist. And I hope to God you wasn't engaged in a white man because I thought somebody said you was engaged to a white man. Eric Ebony, I better not find out your ass was swimming in the milk. If I find out your ass was swimming in the milk, I'm going to lose a lot of respect for you, sister. Because what that tells me if you were with a damn Neanderthal snow puppy, then you're telling me 
At the end of the day, you are trying to condemn black men to justify dating white. If you are an interracial dater, if you are a bunny hopper, then what you are telling me is your whole diatribe, your whole rant against black men driving the bus was a justification so you can date a white man. I hope that ain't the case. I hope that ain't, you spoke well today, my sister. You still didn't deal with collective work and responsibility though. I still heard a lot of Eurocentric individualism. I still heard a lot of Eurocentric individualism. And I don't know where you've been getting your reports from, sweetheart, but we got two million Africans with college degrees unemployed. We got two million Africans with college degrees unemployed because you was doing a whole lot of pushing college. You was doing a whole lot of pushing college today, like as some form of upward mobility. I'm sorry, Sister Ebony K. Williams. College is not an opportunity for 21st century Africans. College is not an opportunity for 21st century Africans. It's putting us into debt to the banks, my sister Ebony K. Williams. So where is your solution for collective group economics? I didn't hear none of that. All I heard was European, Eurocentric, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, individualism. That's all the hell I heard this morning. I wish I was there. I wish I was there. I wish I was at the breakfast club today with Ebony K. Williams. I had a few comments and questions for my sister. Oh, yes. No disrespect. I love my sister. I love my sister. Don't get me wrong now. And she said some good things today, but she departed from the original narrative she was pushing on our working class Africans the other day. She departed from her attack on black males with blue collar jobs. Ebony K. Williams, do you know that you got plumbers who make more money than doctors? Ebony K. Williams, do you know you got carpenters who make more money than surgeons? Ebony K. Williams, do you know you got chefs who make more money than engineers? You got plumbers who make more money than architects. I think you got to go look at your, uh, your uh, census data, my sister. You got to go look at your census data, my sister. You got to go look at your census data a little bit better because I heard a whole lot of Eurocentric pull yourself up by your bootstraps individualism. I didn't hear a single group solution on that conversation today from Sister Evan. I didn't hear a single group solution. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. No disrespect. I, I respect my sister. Very articulate, well-spoken, but I don't hear a lot of conscious energy coming from her. A lot of my middle class bougie black sisters, they on that individualism Europeanism. Peace, Baba. I'm going to get with you in a minute. I saw a lot of European individualism, brothers and sisters. Where are the group solutions at? Oh, just go to college and get yourself a job and save your money from your bus job and open up a business. Where the f is the group solutions at, Ebony K? Are you related to Tasha K? Where the group solutions at? Where the group, I ain't hear a single group solution out that sister's mouth this morning. Not a single group solution. A whole bunch of feminism and European individualism disguised as collective work and responsibility. You can fool some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time. You can't fool King Kong consciousness none of the time. All right, so you guys just heard what Umar had to say, which to me was very interesting, his take. Now, I will say that, you know, I didn't like the fact that he's saying, you know, if I find out that she was swimming in milk, and if you find out she was, what you gonna do? Nothing. I find that part very interesting, but I will say this. Umar Johnson is against interracial dating for both men and women. He's made that very clear. He's even went back and forth with DJ Envy on The Breakfast Club, where DJ Envy, funny enough, who has an issue with Ebony's ex being a white man, um, was fighting hard for black men to be able to, you know, date interracially. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Umar. Are you totally against interracial relationships? I am totally against it, and I want to make sure you understand why. Mm -hmm. It's not because... <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, Ebony. <laughs> Cut it out, Envy. Don't do that, Envy. Because I, I want. We have a name for it. The okay. Snow Bunny Crisis. Okay. I am against the Snow Bunny Crisis, and I want your white listeners to understand, because people be trying to say stuff like, "Uh, he's the Black Hitler." I'm not the Black Hitler. 
I am I am in no way interested in hurting or harming the life of any human, white, Asian, Chinese. I believe in respecting everybody. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm against interracial marriage in and Charlemagne is because marriage is an economic contract. It's an economic contract. So you're, it's, not you're, just white, it's, it's not just white women. You just feel white women, Asian. Everybody. everybody. Nobody should be marrying out the race because there's political consequences, DJ Envy. I'll give you one right now. Naomi Osaka. So that was very interesting, you know, his take when he was talking to Umar. But for some reason, it's an issue for Ebony. Um, personally, I don't care who she dates. That's her business. When she made her comment, she never stated black men. She said she wouldn't date a bus driver, meaning a bus driver of any race because of where she stands in society, her social class. I think people are forgetting, you know, classism in this conversation. She's not coming from a place where she's just making $30,000 a year. Once again, this woman is a multimillionaire. If she does not want to date somebody who's not making what she's making, that is okay. Why? Because so many men say they won't date average women. They don't want to date women who are fives and sixes. You need to be an eight or above. So if men can have choices in women based on looks, their bodies, their age, there I don't see anything wrong when she says this. You know, so I don't know. I just find this whole conversation very interesting. Um, another thing, it's very interesting how he's saying, like, you know, she's pushing college, she's pushing college. But Dr. Umar is highly college educated. He has six degrees. He's been opening up this school. So I don't understand why he's attacking the fact that she's pushing college. He's trying to open up a school and get black kids to focus on education. Now, does college solve everything? Absolutely not. You have people who don't go to college and they're making more money than people who do go to college. But again, those people are also the anomaly. They're also the exception to the rule. For the most part, when you just take regular people, most people who have college degrees make more money than people who have just simple high school diploma when you look on average. So I don't think she's wrong for pushing college and pushing further education because Umar Johnson has pushed that over the years. I guess I'm just confused as to like why everybody is so upset because, again, people have had these conversations for years, but it seems like when it comes from men and they're stating their preferences, everybody just has to deal with it. Well, that's his preference. Well, he's rich. He's a rapper. He's an entertainer. You know, he's a professor. What do you expect? And women have to eat that. But now that you have a successful woman saying that, no, she wants to date somebody on her level, somebody that she's equally yoked with, it's all this backlash and anger. I've never seen anything like this. Like I, like I said, I could see if Ebony was just working customer service. She's an attorney. You know what I mean? And I still, to this day, do not even understand why Ayana asked her that question. She never answered Ebony's original question. And also, Umar Johnson, a few years ago, he was caught in Strippergate, where he was caught, basically, he was sleeping with a stripper. And she got tired of him basically not claiming her and being with her. So Umar had enough wherewithal to know that him being with the woman who worked in the strip club and wore a weave was not conducive to his brand. That if he would have came out publicly and said, this is my new stripper girlfriend, he would have lost a segment of his fans. People would have been like, oh, she's beneath you. She's a stripper. She takes out her clothes for money. He didn't have a problem sleeping with her in secret. But as far as, oh, this is my girlfriend, he didn't want to be with the conscious stripper because of her line of work. So if it's okay for him to say, well, I'm willing to sleep with you and creep with you, but I don't see you as wifey status. I don't see you as, you know, my queen to bring out into the public. And a lot of men defended that, you know, um, it's cool. You know, he's a man. He can sleep with who he wants to sleep with. And he knew that that wasn't good for his brand. I don't understand why people don't give Ebony the same grace that for her brand, for where she's at in life, she wants somebody on her level, somebody of her caliber. I just don't understand the big deal. Now I get some people are saying that, you know, when she came off with her second video was condescending. She was using words like mediocre and things like that. Was it condescending? In a way, yes. Was her vocabulary harsh for some people? Yes. But again, like I've said before, you know who else was condescending? Who else had a very harsh vocabulary? Kevin Samuels. And guess what? People praised him. People loved when he drug women and, and checked them and said that they were sixes at best and they were going to die alone.
Y'all are all out of whack with how men think. This is why you can't get what you want from us because you're valuing something up here that is a used vehicle with a lot of miles. Okay. Just because you hand washed it. You were 20 year old hot. You had 20 year old wound. You had 20 year old body count. You had 20 year old trauma. You had 20 year old experience. That's what we value. That's all it comes down to for us. <laughs> but don't you feel like with those Everything, experiences, a person can add value to no. them? Men value your youth, your fertility, your purity, femininity, submission, ability to cooperate, and fitness. And all of that is at your highest in your youth. The older you get, the older you get. No product gets more expensive with time and use. Have you ever been to the pawn shop? Yeah. All right. You ever take something you really value to the pawn shop? And did that hurt your feelings when they told you how much it was worth? Yes. I was like, what? Yeah. That's you. We the pawn shop. <laughs> People clapped and cheered. So I don't understand, like, why what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. It's just, it's really strange, child, but I'm here for all this drama, honey. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all this, you know, craziness still concerning Ebony K. Williams. It's been a whole week, and we're still talking about this. So let me know your thoughts on what Ayana Van Zant had to say and also what Dr. Umar had to say about the situation as well. And I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.